Ocean Brush Painting, which is a special type of watercolor. Welcome, everybody. Uh, very, very uh, much uh, looking forward to the sharing your the painting experience with everybody. Because the class is very large, we have 260 some people registered. I uh, have to mute everyone. So apologize for uh, doing that. If you have questions, please type in the chat. And also every class before uh, the class, I will uh, email you a handout from uh, the teacher and you could review the recording of the previous class uh, that will be posted on Henry's uh, YouTube channel only to us registered participants. You could view it multiple times and practice outside of the class also. Thank you very much for your, I recognize many faces, Laurie, Florence, uh, Yolante, Nadine, Marion. Oh my goodness, I noticed so many people. I'm sorry you are muted, but hello, and I am very happy you are here. We are going to have a great time together. Thank you so much. I'm going to continue to see your faces, but however, because starting from one o'clock, this class will be recorded. Um, the camera will be recording Henry Lee's uh, view, not us. But if accidentally technology decided to, to include some of us in there, and if you do not want to be recorded, you could uh, turn off your video so your image is not there. Okay, this is just for your privacy if you choose to. But uh, Henry is going to record only his tabletop, which I have spotlighted video for everybody. Right now, you should be able to see Henry's desktop with the sample painting of the pine tree on top of the cliff. Okay, and then on the upper left hand corner, of the screen, you should be able to see Henry sitting there. Okay, and this basically will be what will be recorded in the YouTube uh, video. Okay, I will share the link of the YouTube video after the class, and you are very welcome to review that, practice it, rewind it, <laughs> anything, and uh, spend your time immersing in this beautiful art. Okay, it's uh, one minute before one o'clock. I want to welcome everyone again and we'll continue to admit latecomers. Uh, please uh, take a look at my email and remember that the ID is the same for all eight classes. What you use today to come in to the Zoom meeting is the same for all eight classes. All you need to do is just to keep that ID. I will email, however, every time a few hours before each session as a reminder. And when you practice outside of the class, please do as often as possible. When you have any questions, email me ahead of time. I will gather all the questions and to provide that to, to Henry to answer during the second part of the class. Today, because it's our first session, you could type in your questions in the chat. I will look through them and then present uh, similar questions, common questions to Henry to answer during the second half of the class. The structure of our class is that the first half Henry will teach, demonstrate, and um, we will uh, basically pay attention. Uh, we will not ask questions. The second half is the opportunity for us to paint, ask questions, get answers, get critiques, and uh, do uh, many of the live uh, interactions. Okay, thank you again. Welcome to Brooklyn Public Library. And I'm going to hand this meeting off to our amazing, talented, popular 
online art teacher Henry Lee, who speaks Chinese and English. For this purpose, he was going to teach in um, English. If anyone have questions in Chinese or needs Chinese interpretation, they you could contact me. I could help uh, as much as I could. If not during the class, after the class. Thank you very much and enjoy the class. Henry, it's all yours. Thank you, Yona, for your <laughs> interesting uh, introduction and uh, welcome everybody to this uh, unique uh, opportunity during the pandemic. Um, we cross uh, the barriers of uh, uh, space and the time to get together to learn a uh, uh, thousand year old heri uh, heritage of uh, 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 art. Uh, that I inherited uh, uh, from my ancestors and uh, all the, you know, uh, um, masters over uh, thousand years of uh, history in Asia, um, particularly in China. So the brush painting is uh, um, what we are trying to learn. So first, uh, I will introduce some uh, knowledge about uh, the utensils or the four treasures of an uh, artist's studio. Wen Fang Si Bao in Chinese, four treasures, which means the four type of uh, uh, tools, okay? The first one is the brush. Second would be um, ink. Uh, third is uh, paper. The fourth, um, ink stick. And ink stone, uh, one. <coughs> ink stone and the ink stick counts uh, two, but we can count color as the fourth one. The new four traders, okay. <laughs> the first category is uh, um, brushes. They are made of uh, traditionally natural animal hair. Nowadays, um, more and more synthetic uh, hair are used. So some of you have received uh, uh, free supplies from the library. You will get uh, um, one large brush, I think, and uh, one um, medium stiff brush. We call that uh, wolf. Traditionally, uh, we use category names like a goat or sheep, which is uh, the same in Chinese, yang. Uh, for soft brushes, they are normally white. You know, goat is white. So we, we just call them goat hair brush or sheep hair brush. Then these are all goat hair, sheep hair brushes. And uh, the other side are the stiff brush. Stiff brush is known as the wolf hair. And uh, they are made of a uh, whistle, the yellow, brown color. Um, it could be other stiff hair, um, like a horse, horse, or you know, some some called mountain horse. Nobody have seen a mountain horse. Actually, it's a category. It, it could be badger or or hog, that kind of um, hair or bear. It's also, also, you know, kind of a hug. So mostly from domestic animals. So don't, if you are uh, animal rights, I understand. So um, we try to reduce as a supplier myself, an art supply uh, dealer myself, I try to get as many as you know, possible the uh, alternatives. However, natural hair still has its uh, unreplaceable function to hold the moisture much better than a pure synthetic uh, brush. We do have synthetic brush, pure synthetic brush for those who uh, really don't want any, any uh, natural hair in it. Um, so they are actually a mixture of uh, both, okay? Um, the functions are different. These are wash brushes, but you can also use for um, outlining or contour drawing line, line work. These are basically line works, but you can also use it for um, small areas of, of painting, drawing and painting. 
there there is a uh, one brush in between that uh, um, that is a, a combination brush of a stiff and a soft so it, it comes with a stiff core like this one is open already um, when you got a new brush you 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 need to open the glue that comes with the new brush in water uh, just put it in uh, let me show you the the window here. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah. yeah, you can just put in the you know in the in the water. Um, let me just use uh, use this one. This is most people have uh, received. I think the the medium uh, stiff brush, the brown one. So it's it's stiff right now. You cannot uh, paint like this. You, you can use your finger to squeeze it. Don't twist, you can twist a little bit, maybe, you know, squeeze, just squeeze, you know. You, it will open and twist a little bit when you start to open. Okay, and then um, just dip in water. It's very easy, that's all. Now it's soft, right? So it, it comes with a starch, not a hard um, glue. You might lose a few hair in, uh, when it's brand new it will stop okay so this is a stiff brush and when that open you cannot put this uh, this cap away just throw it away do not uh, try to put it back uh, this is just for transportation for for um for the stores you know once you get home you start using it and some said uh, if you do not use your new brush for long you might want to open it and uh, it's better to keep it like this than this because the uh, seaweed may be attracted to some warm, I don't know, uh, insects. You know, they, they might got to, uh, just like wool, wool, you know, uh, you need to uh, take care to store it with some, uh, some uh, uh, moss, moss ball, that kind of thing will help if you don't use the brush for long. Um, so let me put this back if I don't want to use them. So we have three basic brushes, which are these three. If you are a beginner, you can get this three. And uh, if you are uh, more advanced, you want to paint a larger painting, you can get this two in addition to this three. We call it basic five. And there's another good option is in basic four basic three, basic soft, basic stiff, and a small uh, detailed brush with a, a combination brush. That's basic four. So you can get the, these are the, the recommendations for you. Um, okay, I'm going to show you the function of uh, these two because this three, that's what the uh, library have uh, uh, provided for many of you, okay? And for small detail brush, you can use other alternatives from uh, like a rigor brush in watercolor painting class. You, 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 um, or some small, you know, detail brush you, you, you have will also work. So um, let me try this one to show you the, the function of this one. Uh, when, you, when you start using the brush, you need to soak it in water like this. Okay, and then you squeeze out the extra moisture like that. Um, we, we can use a, uh, a special fabric. It's, uh, let me see. We call this a uh, magic class. It's a practice. Uh, um, surface. We used to practice uh, strokes like a calligraphy on bricks. This serves like a, the, the, you know, the, the clay brick. It's uh, absorbent and it, it will evaporate. Um, so you can try, you know, just draw something or write something. Draw a, cr a cross in, this, in Chinese it's 10 or try to do a bamboo leaf or a slant stroke uh, or something like that to just to um, 
get a feel. How to hold the brush? You hold it like a chopstick. Okay, if you have two chopsticks, you hold like this, right? Then take this away. Take, you know how to use the chopstick? This is three fingers, right? This like, like this. And um, the difference between you hold chopsticks and a pencil is this. This is a pencil, right? You hold it like a pencil. Then this way you cannot move the uh, handle of the brush freely. And you need to hold it uh, a little higher. And uh, uh, it could be you know, very high, very loosely. And normally it just uh, depends on the size of the stroke. And you hold the brush um, with all five fingers. So this two, the ring finger and the small finger against the, the, the handle from behind. And this middle finger is very important. It pull the, the brush handle inside and together with clip the brush like this. This two finger basically um, hold the brush. And then this, this, the middle finger also can twist the brush. That's the trick of it. I have a special video showing people how to how to use the middle finger. Okay, here here's the, the the reason, especially with this brush. Okay, so when you draw something like this, you know, just draw an orchid. You, if you haven't seen an orchid bef before, look at uh, my background. There's an orchid right behind me. There, you can see the elegant leaf, right? We can do that in one calligraphy stroke in Chinese brush painting. And this is a good um, testing stroke for, for, uh, to see, to see uh, if the brush is good or bad. If the brush you know, uh, spring back, it's, it's always good. It's for soft brush, you need more skill. And this is how um, I, I, I do it. You, you, you do it right now, and then you twist the brush sometimes, you know, to do the the other part. So during the, the stroke, I twist the brush. Kind of, you know, when I draw, I also doing this. See this? And your your middle finger can do a little adjustment. So the brush tip stays. And also, I draw with my arm. Uh, above the table, not uh, not on the table. By the way, <laughs> I need to protect my sleeve, like uh, you know, with this uh, glove sleeve. <coughs> okay. So this brush is very soft. So if it's too soft. Here's a tip, you can change it. Especially um, for smaller painting, you can temporarily change the size of the brush using a string, any, any string or um, uh, wire or something. Okay, this is a hemp rope I, I got. You can use some, uh, something for gardening. Yeah, this is what uh, my wife used for gardening, I think. And then just do this. See? Let me do it again. You, you put uh, one, one string like this, one end like this, and then about a uh, half inch, uh, depends on how much you want to reduce, maybe a uh, half inch to a, qu qu uh, a quarter inch. And then you, you just uh, tie it like this. And this will become a, you know, from a, a cheap brush t to a professional brush, believe it or not. So with this brush, now it has, it, <laughs> it's, it's much stiffer <laughs> and it has the, the shorter um, hair, right? And you can always, uh, um, Take it out if you if you you know when when you finished you can remove this string. So for now I just 
for today, I, I'll, I'll leave it on. Okay, that's my first tip. I, I've read this book um, from uh, a master in my hometown. So this is a, um, this painting I, we're going to do actually has to do with this artist. Uh, his name is uh, Pine Cliff, Song Yan. Song Yan, Qian Song Yan. His last name is uh, Qian, comes first. Um, in this book, uh, he shared uh, uh, some old tips and tricks, including uh, this one I just learned. Okay, so I shared this knowledge with you. <laughs> Don't blame me, I didn't tell you how to do this uh, before because I just learned last night. Um, the uh, brushes. The next category is the ink. There are more tips coming, okay? <coughs> um, we normally use an ink stick, grinding the ink uh, with uh, water. This is a nice uh, traditional water dropper. You hold the top with your thumb and then you, you can get a one, you know, one shot just like this with the gravity. And if you release your thumb, it will get a string of the water. So that's a traditional way. You can just use any a spoon, a spoon or something to get water. And this takes a while, but for ancient uh, artists, it's not time waste to grind your ink. It, it quiet you down. And uh, look at your sample paintings, start to remember the composition. Uh, try to read the painting on the left corner. You know, like I said, I uh, I will, I, will I remember the composition like uh, the thirds. You know, where the the tree is is the upper third, and the 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 uh, the main rock takes two thirds. And then the small rock on the lower left is about one third. Yeah, let's get into it, that mood when I do this. And uh, you're supposed to do it just slowly and gently with no rush. Okay. However, you know, my teacher told me, taught, taught me, um, you, can, you can use uh, bottled ink. Why to enhance it you know you can just use this as a as a um, as a um, container and then um, if it's not uh, thick enough because uh, you need especially when when you write calligraphy you need to have the the ink uh, feel like a, th a thin paste very thick you know when I learned calligraphy the first thing is to get the ink thick enough. If it's not dark enough, you cannot, uh, you cannot write a good calligraphy. So this will help to reduce the time on this, to grind the ink with a mixture of uh, bottled ink and uh, um, water. You can just use pure bottled ink if you like, and then make it really into a paste. We, by paste, you mean when I do this, you can see the trace of the the ink stick, you're leaving a dry tra trace, and the, uh, yeah. Okay, but you know, for this kind of small painting, we only need maybe three drop of uh, ink. That's uh, how much. We also have this uh, convenient ink cake. Uh, it is a solid, uh, like a half pan, you know, like a pan of a watercolor, like this. So we're talking about color now. Color, um, may be considered as uh, um, the fourth treasure. Ink stone is uh, the third, okay. Um, ink and ink stone. So you can use half pens like this Japanese uh, blocks from Amazon you can get. And now uh, I, I use uh, Maris. Maris. This is different than the regular watercolor pens. Um, because the binding material is different. They use uh, gelatin 
instead of uh, Gun Arabia, um, when gelatin glue is dry, the ink is waterproof, so you can wet mount it. I can rewash, rewet it without uh, causing any bleeding or running. But with the stick build up, it was still. Um, if you use uh, watercolor, it's fine. Okay, in this class, and I will tell, I'll show you how to mount it without water. So we have a dry mounting te uh, technique. I'll show you later in the class. Um, so you don't have to worry about uh, running um, colors afterwards. Because we, we need to mount the paper. Um, let me do this right away. So OK, this is the painting I did for this uh, handout. You all got it from email, right? This is the original here. I'm holding it right now. And if you look at uh, uh, the paper has kind of uh, wrinkles. It comes some from the manufacturer because they come flipped. Um, so there are some, some uh, crease like that. Uh, this paper is an unsized paper, which means the, the, the uh, ink or water will go through. Because this is a kind of uh, thick, heavy paper, um, you don't really see a, 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 a mirror image on the back side. If it's a thing, a single weight color, uh, a single weight paper, you will see the color almost like a, you know the same on the front. This is the front. This is the back. If you use size the paper, which is uh, non-absorbent paper, uh, you won't see anything on the back. Uh, let me just uh, try three different kind of paper here. This is the double one. I think we're not going to use that for the class because it takes too much paint. Not easy to paint. That old master recommended don't use double shun <laughs> because it's hard to paint. Even the master says that, so we follow that. Um, he, he used single shun or mulberry paper. That's what he used. Why we have to learn ma from masters? Because this kind of uh, painting does not exist in nature. So we have to learn the strokes first from uh, ancient masters or contemporary teacher um, masters. Uh, then we learn from nature. When we go outside to sketch or um, paint from photo, we know the strokes, how to simplify, how to, how to organize things. Um, eventually, we'll create our own uh, painting. So you start by copying. Anybody have uh, any rejection to copying? It's fully legal to copy my work or um, ancient masters work in Chinese culture or Eastern Asia. You must, actually. Um, to, it's a tradition to, to pass down the, the, um, uh, the heritage, you know, the, to, to trans transmit the, the, this uh, form of art. So you learn by copying. Um, there are three kinds of paper we're going to uh, for practice you can use uh, this white um, paper is called uh, uh, rice uh, rice paper ha Japanese rice paper uh, you have many of this this in the supply provided um, to local students right so we can try this one first this one I consider is uh, uh, semi-sized. Semi-sized means uh, it, does, it uh, absorbs, but uh, not bleed that much, which is good for a student. And uh, um, let's draw some lines to practice. You can use just ink only. So the ink is considered as the colors. And we call it uh, fen wu se. There are five colors of uh, ink, which means uh, five values in, in English uh, uh, tones, right? Or, yeah, tones. Five tones the dark and the light. The, the, when I load the brush, I don't load with a single tone. So it will come, you know, it will change from light to dark. So that's called ink, ink using. There are two elements in Chinese t 
Chinese painting technique known as Bi Mo. Bi means uh, brush. Any questions there? So far? Yes, Henry. There is a question about the paper you use uh, to paint the pine on cliff. Yeah, that's Was a double that shun. A shun. That's a I used the double shun, but uh, double. Um, okay. I didn't realize the master didn't like it until I read the books last night. <laughs> so I, I won't use that today. Okay. I, so it's, a, which it's not paper? an easy paper to use. It's too, too take too much um, moisture. Yeah. Which paper did the master like to use for that? The mulberry kind of paper or the semi sized, semi sized okay. one. Yeah, let's do okay. that. Okay, this is a um, practice paper. The okay. Japanese uh, rice paper, you can practice the strokes with, and you can um, see the, um, yeah. Henry, it, there is another caring message from our audience. A few people noticed that your yellow protective uh, glove is not protecting your white uh, cuff. Okay. Thank you so much, Tao and yeah, I'll, just other I'll just do thank it you. like like that. Yeah. So, yeah, so thank you. Um, yeah, that's too too big. Uh -huh. My wife's uh, shirt. I used to. Uh, you can use a sock. Socks, right? Yeah, I'll just do this. Anyway. Yeah, that is a good idea. The clean socks to cut the holes and just to put on yeah, your hand. Yeah, so, I, I think yeah. That, that's, a, that's a good yeah. idea. If the dirty, you don't need wash, you just throw it away, get another uh -huh. old pair. That's right, it. yeah, you got it. So um, I'm going to test uh, the semi-sized paper here. The next, <clears throat> the brush and the ink. Um, which one is more important? Of course, the brush, because the ink, um, the brush is the vehicle. The ink, um, what, if you do the stroke correctly, the sequence correctly, the ink will come out naturally. If you know, no matter how well you you prepare your ink, um, if your stroke is not correct, you won't deliver. Okay, so that's why it's so important to learn the stroke. Um, so you use uh, a little water. I have a three, three um, sections, three wheel <laughs> wash it. So I use one for um, ink, maybe one for color or something like that. And, and one um, wash the brush. Anyway, you, you can draw the, um, the rock first. All right, rock is much easier than anything else. You can it could be in any shape, right? So if you pull the brush like that, you got a straight line easily, right? But we try to hold the brush this way, the in 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 standing position. Then we can we can vary the pressure a little bit. You know, you can draw from top down. You can, if you're, if you are old, if you, <laughs> I'm, I'm not uh, using the word in a negative uh, uh, sense. Uh, if your hand is shaking, it's good in Chinese painting. You, you know, when I was a, um, a, a teenager, I started to learn uh, in 1930, uh, 1973. Um, I cannot do this, this kind of stroke. I think I'm gradually getting to it. You know, you you do this uh, staccato staccato stroke. I call it. And if you do it, you know, quickly. So that's the rock contour we're going to use. And in the beginning, you might just do this to see if you can draw an even line, and then you try to see when the brush gets dry, it's easier, right? Um, it's good to have the split brush. So a ch any cheap brush, split brush, not good for calligraphy, are are you know good for 
for the landscape, for the rocks. Okay, another way of doing this is this is called pouring. Pour, pouring, or um, you you lead the brush with the handle. You know, it could be this way. So your your brush handle towards the direction you move. That's pull, right? So what's the opposite direction? Uh, it's a push. Push. Push and pull. That's basically. Uh, so you you can draw. You can push the brush like this to get a, a rough, rough uh, feel. And try to vary. You know, vary the this, the uh, distance. They actually represent something later. You know, we we'll talk about. But the uh, the stroke itself has a life. Believe it or not, um, they're not just a you know, an even line. So if you if you if you have this line quality, your your painting will look um, much better than a child child painting. Child painting is just you know draw like a pencil drawing without pressure, without a variation of this kind of uh, um, rhythm. Yeah, press and lift. Try to vary the try to vary the pressure. We call this a tr um, shaking or t tempering. I, I don't know how you exactly staccato is a good word. I just learned from a student, a music uh, uh, musician maybe. And they use this on uh, violin on 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 piano. Piano is like a music. Um, we develop the voice just like a singer, uh, opera singer. If you in New York, you understand. You go into an opera, you don't really appreciate the story. You already know the, the story, the end of the, the drama, right? You appreciate the voice of the actor, actress. As a master painter, um, you know, we appreciate their voice, like the brush strokes is their voice, the rhythm of the, the, um, the, the uh, brush stroke, okay. Um, so this is semi-size. It's very good to, to use for this today's assignment. You can also use a uh, mulberry paper, which is more expensive. Maybe so we didn't have that for everybody, and you have you can save it for later purpose. But I will show you. This is number one has uh, less mulberry number one. We number them on our website. Maybe different uh, system in uh, other suppliers, but uh, number two has longer fibers in it. You may have something like this. Uh, from the library, it's called Korea, Co Korean mulberry. But you don't have to worry. Just uh, uh, tell you this: this fiber uh, paper is called mulberry paper. They are all known as rice paper in general. But we call this kind of smooth paper more um, rice paper in Chinese. Xuan uh, paper, X U A N, X U A N paper. So this is a semi-sized. I use this code for myself to to mark semi-sized. If I just use uh, SZ, is a size. So I may just write this code. You know, semi-sized. Okay, or SM. I don't know how to abbreviate it. Um, so this is the the semi-sized. Uh, this is mulberry number one. Uh, number number one mulberry. My brush. C can you read it still? Number one. That's uh, number one. Then this is number two. It has long fiber in it. I just put uh, the initial maybe. Okay. <coughs> and uh, this paper almost like a fabric. It's uh, comparable to the dollar bill. You you will not uh, you know uh, get uh, uh, falling apart, get holes. So this is good. F uh, to, to use too. Uh, now we try to draw a, a shape. Okay. Now you just learned the, the stroke, right? So we try to draw a triangle. So you pull and then push side. So you see the tip of the brush now is on the uh, from the center shifted to the left side. This is called the side stroke side stroke. 
<coughs> this part, this, 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 this is the side, tip on this side. And this is the tip, tip centered stroke, zhong feng, means middle. Uh, tip concealed also. Tip concealed uh, means you, you try to hide the tip, they don't, they don't uh, expose. Because if you paint like this, you know, it, it's zen, but um, it's less cultivated zen. It's too spontaneous. You need to kind of uh, um, to, make it, to make it feel more um, educated <laughs> or, how to say, or cultivated. Um, so you, you try to hide the tip. You can you can have a single you know very simple Zen painting, but uh, like a Bada Shanyan, the most famous Zen painter, um, a monk or Taoist priest, I forgot. Uh, yeah, maybe both. Uh, he does his line the best. This kind of line the best. He he hides his uh, brush tip. He uses a very soft brush. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you can you can use uh, the side brush to do surface texture. We call this wrinkles texture or surface texture. Okay. This is this is the the outline contour. So a painting to do a rock, uh, you need to do the contour and then surface texture. Uh, you might call it a shading. Uh, I prefer call it a shaping because we don't really consider um, light lighting. We we have a different concept called yin yang, dark and light. No ten, no dan, no dark and light, no ten in Japanese. Dark against the light. Um, a common mistake is this. When you do, you know, a kind of a rock, for example, and then you, you kind of divide into um, three dimensions. It's thinking about a box. It's a rock is like a cube, right? A cube. You put it in a cube. So there's a side uh, and then the top, right? So you, 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 you should, not, should not shade the top plane, right? The top plane usually uh, gets light you know, from the sky. So I in Chinese painting, uh, it's also um, light. What you what you can do is to squeeze out this. So now this part is even uh, brighter, right? Squeeze out the uh, foil out the dark the light with dark uh, outside, outside, you know, or in, you know in the background. So that that could be a, another dimension behind this. So that, that's how it works in, um, in Chinese uh, painting. The light, uh, the dark and the light works. Yeah, you, can, you, can, you can do this, but not on both sides of a contour. Uh, so usually above the light part or under it, right? OK. That's about uh, sh um, contour and uh, uh, shaping texture, we call that uh, cun. Cun like is like uh, wrinkles uh, in in, on a, uh, in people's face or uh, hands. It's like uh, uh, wrinkles, yeah, wrinkle stroke. There are different styles. Uh, basically, um, X cut. This is the X cut. X cut uh, is using the side of the brush. You you. I have an interpretation, maybe different uh, um, than the traditional one. Not just the the action of the X, you know, it's like a like a it's it's the trace almost like a, the stone X, the stone age. If you go to maybe a metropolitan museum, you'll see all the stone age, the Paleolithic stone. They 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 chip the stone to make a sharp edge, and the surface is has this kind of. A, uh, we call that. Uh, I I was an archaeologist, so we we have special term for that kind of uh, 
uh, texture. I think Western painting also have this kind of stroke, especially um, Cezanne. He he studied rocks and he also studied the Paralytic uh, stone tools, and the, he he does the stroke like that. Yeah. Okay. Same thing. Let me get some water. So I'm going to talk about the color later. <coughs> yeah, you got uh, six colors. Basically, they are um, blues and uh, blues and uh, um, reds and uh, yellows. Um, okay, let let me just uh, summarize them into two groups. One is called the uh, uh, opaque colors. Opaque colors. Uh, you got uh, the the um, third grade. Uh, <laughs> it's light, light blue color, and the uh, medium, medium green color, which is opaque. You cannot use it uh, directly. It must be applied with the uh, um, with the preparation. For example. On top of dark, you are shiny. If you put on white, it's chalky. It that, it's too light. Um, bronze is good for preparation. Prepar you know, like a ground for the, these colors, these stone green colors, uh, mineral colors. Um, that's uh, amber or uh, amber. U M U M B R. There's uh, yeah, and we we have a, a cool kind of a, um, red, a blue bluish red called uh, rouge, and we have carmine, and uh, um, indigo, and uh, ye yellow, uh, gamboge yellow. These are uh, source for the green. We don't have the transparent green. This green is a is a light green. It's a very uh, chalky green, and this is a uh, uh, grass green. We call it transparent green, and they, they need to combine the work together. And uh, this on top of that, or um, yeah, we'll talk about that. How to use that? And there's cyan uh, blue, which is uh, more uh, kind of uh, intense blue colors. And some other colors we didn't pick. Um, so you don't have to. There's a uh, vermilion and a cinnabar for oranges because the season is uh, more uh, pink. So we, we I choose uh, carmine and rouge for cherry blossom. I'm going to do the next. But for today we might need a little bit for the the the, the vine or something the red um, on the pine tree. So okay. That's uh, that's about uh, utensils. We we got uh, we have to to start doing this painting. So if you have a printer, you can print out this handout. Uh, it might um, be a little too small, but uh, if you're good at drawing, just do it uh, with a with a pencil. I use a charcoal, like a soft charcoal, like this, and. Uh, um, let me pick a piece of paper here. You can also put this this paper. It's like tracing paper itself. This is semi size, semi transparent paper. Any rice paper should have this kind of transparency. If not enough, you can use a, a light box. You know. My my daughter sent this uh, one time as a as a Christmas gift. I never used it, but you don't have to because uh, not much improvement needed. Um, I mean, for for this purpose, you don't y usually you trace the outlined template for for elaborated style. We have different styles. This style is called direct style, free, uh, spontaneous style. So we don't really need that. And basically, I just draw a a. Uh, um, 
some position. You can my my teacher may just use fingertips. You know, you can just just draw the uh, control lines like this. Just just use finger nail, finger nail to draw this. You know, something like that. But for the tree, you might want to do a little bit. Uh, uh, you might want to 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 be more precise because uh, a tree is very complicated to to draw, right? So notice the the branch uh, has a little bit perspective, so it's get getting a little thicker and thinner, but uh, not much bent. So it should be a little bent on the bottom, right? And uh, um, the split here, a common mistake or misconception is that all the branches um, sum up as a, you know, equals to the trunk, which is not true. It could be larger, okay? So this branches could be, the, the sum of these two could be larger than the, the main trunk. If you look at the, the trees in life, you'll find that, you'll believe my observation. This is what I learned from nature. And I see uh, uh, the artists, they, they don't really look like, uh, uh, let me see if I have a computer paper, I can draw, oh, okay, okay. yeah, the, don't, don't draw a tree like a Y, you know, like that, or, or just the Ys, you know. So they, this <laughs> one, one plus one equals two. That's that's not good. Draw something. Um, first of all, not uh, um, not uh, what do you call symmetrical. Not symmetrical, right? Yeah. So one side, especially this this kind of tree has a, uh, a nice arm towards one side, usually the down downhill. So people call this welcome welcome guest tree, welcome guest pine, and the, especially in in the in the famous uh, mountain called Huangshan, they have a thousand year old pine um, called this uh, ex exclusively <laughs> with this name but so other other mountains may have their own uh, landmark or tree tree what do you call this uh, uh, welcome tree but this one is in the mountain uh, in Shandong province uh, the the hometown of Confucius when he climbed it he had um, he has uh, saying, you know, when he climbed on the top, he felt the, um, the, the world is small. Um, yeah, behind, below, you know. So he, this, this is pine standing on top of a cliff is a theme starting from the Confucius time. Let me show you the real picture of this tree, by the way. Um, this artist, uh, I, um, inspired and learned after is uh, Chen Song Yan. He did the, this many, many times. Uh, he climbed the mountain Tai uh, and then, um, okay, this is, yeah, okay. The, uh, this is another version of it. I had this poster on my, on my uh, living room wall. It, it cost only 13 cents Chinese uh, money that time, it, you know, very accessible. <laughs> so I have many in this kind of, I still have one um, with me. I will show them tomorrow in my advanced master class uh, to do that one. But I don't have this copy though with me. Um, yeah, this is the, the real tree look like. Oops. Okay, so um, you don't really copy the picture, right? So the artists exaggerate that. You can see how exaggerated. Uh, so the tree is not, not just on the, on the uh, slope. It's on top of the cliff. The cliff is not so 
uh, steep, but you want to show the... Actually, this mountain is very steep mountain. It's hard to climb. It's like if I saw this uh, mountain from the trace, uh, train station there, it's like a um, very tall into the sky. Just one um, trail directly to the heavenly gate. It's uh, the secret mountain for uh, for the emperors to worship the heaven, to receive mandate from heaven, because the emperor uh, is called the son of heaven. That's where they got uh, um, the mandate, not by vote, not by vote. They, they, are son, they are believed to be the son of heaven, symbolized by the dragon. Right? Tai, Mount Tai is the feng shan, the ceremony for receiving this mandate very secret place. Um, and this is another shot. And this is Qian Song Yan's painting. I, I basically um, learned from this composition. Uh, I liked it because it has a host mountain and guest mountain, uh, or subject mountain, um, subject uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, to, or supporting, mount, you know, in, in, in the classical teaching book, they, they call this uh, the emperor. It's the, you know, the host and then the subjects watch, uh, worshiping or, or um, paying, uh, kotoing, kotoing <laughs> right, to the emperor. So um, yeah, that's how, and the, all these this mountains, uh, little mountains under it. Yeah, that's a hierarchy of uh, composition. You don't want to paint all the mountains to the same heights, right? So this is the, this is my interpretation. Um, my, my copy, you can say that, I'm mimicking the master. So we, I always, uh, I will introduce you more masters when we come to uh, like a panda, you know, I will learn. Just like a horse or shrimp. When you paint a horse, you think about Xu Bei Hong's house, horse, uh, shrimp. A lobster, you think about Qi Bai Shi. When artists will spend their lifetime to do one theme, in China, just like opera singers, you know, they, they paint the journey, um, I mean, then they sing certain, um, certain voice, um, they pr have to practice lifetime. Okay. Yeah. Oops, let me go back to this. So I, I won't draw everything, but uh, you know, just uh, roughly, the idea is to overlap some uh, the interlock, some uh, sections. They did, did uh, try to try to create a pattern with a large and a small, um, dense and sparse, solid and voids. It's hard to explain these kind of terms, but when I paint, I will show share with you my decision making process maybe. So I right now I concerned with the top of the tree, uh, the arm, you know, maybe I, I would um, make them not on the same line, because that was a mistake, I believe. I try to correct that. So every time I make a little improvement, it's good to copy yourself, not just copy. The first painting I did, I made 12, I'm sorry, tw 22 versions before I entered to the, to the show of the provincial youth um, uh, art show, I got a first place or something, you know, featured in the local newspapers when I was 15. So that one took me uh, 15 attempts. So I learned from that time, you have to repeat, copy, repeat, yeah. I'm so sorry, I this is Yang Li, Henry, yeah. to interrupt you. Uh, are you currently uh, painting? Because we are not seeing your oh, screen thank where you, you might be painting. Thank you for telling me. Yeah, thank you. That's what exactly I need to you to. I, I always got uh, lost to track. So I, and there I, was another question yes. from the audience. Uh -huh. Is it okay to use a pen to draw the tree? Oh, good question. Um, we don't use the paint. You can use brush directly. You can use the brush. And let me tell you a, a tip. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I have this uh, transparency. Okay. 
this, this, uh, this transparency that will protect the original. If it's a copy, you know, I don't really mind. This is the original, right? So I put a transparency on this. How, how many tips I already gave you? I lost the track. The third tip, right? <laughs> OK. So this is the third tip. You don't learn, learn this from the books. OK. So this, this will protect my, my uh, uh, original. And if you cannot see, you can put a light box. Nowadays, it's very easy, you know, just like a paper thing, light box. Oops. And you can see that, right? And you can leave this on when I, you know, I can leave this on when I paint. So you can, you can see clearly what I'm copying myself, right? OK, let's, let's do it. I use a small brush for the, the we haven't talked about that, for the foliage. I use this medium uh, stiff brush, the, the one that just opened for, for this purpose. And I, um, I'll start from right from the darkest. How about, how's that? OK. And to practice, I don't want to do the tree. I, I want to do the rock, of course. The rock could be, could be covered with the trees, I mean, with vegetation and another rock. So if I make a mistake, I, I'll start from a safe zone, safe zone. So um, let, me, let me do a, uh, I may change the, uh, because I don't really want exactly the same. So I, I, I will try to vary a little bit. OK. See, I push the brush. I push it up like that. I can also push it down like this. You know, I just use the, the old painting as a uh, reference for placement. And that's important, proportions. When the proportion is right, you can always do everything. So that's so important to have the proportion right. The placement right. The placement, we call it the jing ying wei zhi. Jing ying wei zhi, to arrange the space. OK, then uh, within that space, you can do freely. All right? And now I'm worried about uh, the the size of the the the, uh, the interlock of the the um, you know just adjust the tip on the paper you know you you use you you don't draw like just a straight down you go like this 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 kind of you know to exaggerate you you draw the brush with a little shake shaking hand variation of uh, um, thickness and pressure. Okay, that's that's how you got this kind of roughness, and just feel the tip of the brush. Wait it uh, to turn when you try to make it turn. Just uh, wait, have you know patience, control. Don't leave the brush. Uh, uh, you know, don't leave the paper. Look at the the sample and the, your, and just kind of go slow, go slowly. To have us, you don't have to repeat. Don't repeat. That's a, another rule of the game. The, 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 so if you remember these uh, rules, you're in the ballpark. Um, vary the shape. Vary the shape of each uh, uh, dimension, or, or uh, we call it the face of the stone. You know, rock has a face, three faces. Yeah, they are like animals, right? You can think the rock is like a, you know, a tiger, or th they have name like Tiger Mountain, Dragon Mountain, or uh, they don't have Bear Mountain. <laughs> anyway, well, um, so in, in my in my hometown, there's a tiger and dragon, crowing dragon. Okay, push the the brush up to get kind of coarse. And then pull the brush, you know, easily. Sometimes, so you vary the, the the angle constantly. And I try to create a, a white contrast with dense. So there, it, because this side has more um, interlocked shapes. And let me show you the concept of this. So when you draw this uh, um, this piece, you you look at you think about the cube, right? 
So the, the front is like uh, this, and then they, uh, it could be like this. So one, two, three, it gets you know, smaller. Yeah, some gets, of course they are not equal, so some just come to the front again. So you think about this, this, this uh, concept, this, this, uh, and then we'll do the shade, shading. So this is a, a perspective from large to small, large to small, right? Think, but you don't want to let people see these boxes in your mind. You want to hide them, right? Okay, now we'll talk about uh, a little bit about ink variation. Um, the top should be the emphasis, the focus. So it's, it's more solid with a darker, more moisture, more sure, more uh, detail, right? Kind of uh, uh, lines. Now we're getting to the foot. You want to keep focus there. So when we get this part, we add a little water and then uh, use dry brush, use dry brush. Um, so just uh, reduce, maybe not so rapidly. If you load the brush, um, and starting from here, you get, when you paint the down there, you get naturally lighter, right? And you can reload from here, and then it will go even lighter and lighter. And because you can have more, um, what they call this uh, staccato, staccatos here, more voids like that, and uh, just dry dry brushing, pushing to get the uh, a little hint. Or try to vary. You see, I just uh, we all you know make the same mistake. Uh, that is uh, equal equal division of uh, you know. When I try to divide the space here, I should make this larger, this smaller, 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 ten, you know, because they stack together, overlap together, right? Right. And you know, if something goes wrong, I'll just use water to. Oops. My transparency is not big enough. <laughs> so I, I may. Pa uh, this paper is semi-sized, so on the on the back you can see it's not really. Um, penetrate through. If it's this unsized, it will go through right away. So I got the stain right away. So, you know, so I move the transparency down a little bit to protect my uh, original. And I keep doing this, copy, copy myself. So you can do the um, wash right away. If you want a soft, if, if you want a, you know, a soft um, effect, soft edge, soft, soft effect. So you add water to get uh, blurred. Um, you can use a different brush you know, you to, to, for that. You can, so, but I think the master will use the same brush. I have a documentary, if you're interested in the end of the class, we'll see how he did it. But you need to practice first, so you, you see, you can really see what to, where to see, okay. See, dense and the sparse, so you don't have a texture all even, right? Um, you can you can understand as a as a um, in Western terms, you know, the perspective. So this is near you. This is far far farther, so it could become dense. But in in, in Chinese, we 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 don't really think that way. Um, because our perspective moves. When we paint the tree, our eye level is there, so we don't really look up at the underneath of the mushroom or the umbrella shape. You know, it's it's uh, different. So um, now I I try to make uh, uh, this part a little darker. Why? Because uh, I want to against create some some uh, dark against the the light here. And you can have some very light, dry brush, just to give a little texture so it's not purely white. You can use color, you know, later. So I, I can use, even this, 
these lines should be very sure marks, not very, you know, not just uh, lazy, uh, sloppy strokes. So this part you can you can uh, wash with a little darker, more solid. It, it could be a shadow under the umbrella. If it's not dark enough, we can go back to reinstate the lines and uh, add another layer, maybe uh, just some vegetation later. Okay, so that's the, the main rock. Um, save, don't copy exactly what I got or the master got. You know, if you got a good stroke, you, you need to um, preserve it. But um, people have a tendency, even myself, to, if you um, commit too early, you, you, you're too timid you know, to, to uh, uh, change. To, to, uh, so don't commit too early is another um, advice. But usually, you know, you paint about about 40% uh, maybe, you know, at this time of what you try to do. Don't finish, don't complete. That's my, uh, another um, rule of game. Don't complete. Leave something for color for other elements, dots. We just do this, the uh, contour and a little bit, um, little bit shading or, or uh, texture. Okay. <coughs> um, Let's do the tree. Let's do the tree. I will use the same brush to do the trunk. And this is where I start, because this is an important uh, division point where uh, I started the rock at a division point too. You know, I didn't talk about today, but uh, usually it's a division point where the dimensions start to, to separate the dark and light. And here is the split, right? So I, I, I want to make sure that's where I, I got, and then I have a Z-shaped uh, kind of a branch there. Let me just do the bottom. So you draw with a tip concealed stroke or tip centered stroke, and then uh, you can repeat. You can make loops. You can vary the the um, you can vary the pressure. And you leave some, uh, very important, you leave some uh, breaks. Don't complete, no complete. This will suggest the highlight, will also suggest the rough surface of the bark. So that you can, if you're not enough, you, you can always go back and add to it. But you, you, you don't want to do the exact, you know, same kind of dotted line, like NC, what's it called, anti lines? And just the uh, um, equal line dashes. No, not not equal. Have a rhythm. That's very important. Okay, you can draw a little bit the uh, um, suggestion of the the uh, the root. That's a difficult part. So if you feel, you just cover it with rock. Okay, so don't worry about that because this perspective we don't really see the root. We're looking up the tree, so don't really emphasize too much. And the, the two sides, I will say this side uh, might be a little stronger or shit, you know, more uh, than, the, than the left, but uh, not in the absolute uh, you know, light. You can start to, to draw uh, the bark which is like a half circle, half um, square thing. You, you know, just, you, you can draw some eight numbers or something like that, you know, go, just if you have that feeling first in your mind, oh, that's a bark, would you look like, a, you know, don't draw a pattern, but draw the, feel of it, the sensation of that. And leave some uh, white in the middle, which shows the roundness of it, you know. So that's uh, um, some, or some white, some uh, unpainted area for, for uh, highlight. And this, 
and the the trunk should go the branch I mean should come in to the trunk not just the, uh, like the Y I talked about so this has a front and the back relationship front and back relationship yeah should I zoom in and then you have to remind me zoom out if you lose sight okay you see my trunk there and uh, this this highlight could be uh, should not be right in the middle you know sometimes it's uh, on this side sometimes it shift back you know like here you make uh, it basically I change the dark uh, from left to right sometimes just vary a little bit it not just the uh, equally you know this side is dark that side is it, you kind of vary that and so that that um, we call this like a dragon the uh, dragon scale what um, and you, you know so on this little branches you just dot you don't have to do the circles okay now we we have to talk about uh, where the branch comes to uh, double branch come to single that's a little tricky I talked about in my early class before um, let's see okay here that's it we, we we have double lines all the way here and then here notice that I always have the angular angle when I make a turn I don't make a loop uh, I make a curve I make a corner also at the at the point where the the branch tends to I mean the yeah the double line into single line you, you make a dot so there's nail head that's a that's a technical term nail head yeah nail head stroke nail head stroke let me do this here when I talk nail head you have a pass and then go you know that's a nail right that's a nail head right it could be in a different angle that's it nail head alright so this is where the um, the branch meet uh, the trunk okay put a nail head there you have uh, by the way the second type only two kind of stroke eye drop like a dot right so you start we don't use this uh, so far but later when we draw the pine needles you don't have the pressure to start right this is an e extended eye drop you know just like like this so you extend that you pressure you press at the end of stroke that form a nail a heavy ending this part so the the center becomes very very dark naturally two kind of strokes oh, I love myself I have so many ideas and never prepared it sounds very academic huh because I have 40 years of experience uh, teaching just kidding 40 years of painting Oh yes, uh, maybe uh, I I taught uh, in university um, to my fellow um, classmates, and I taught in University of Washington um, when I studied uh, history there. Um, I have uh, found a, a teaching job in the uh, um, extension. They called the uh, um, experimental college run by the student union you know so <coughs> yeah I always been teaching and I I taught online before a well, long time before the, the zoom come okay here is another um, theory I learned from my teacher and many years later I understand after I studied that uh, metaphor he said the gesture of the pine is like a Tai Chi 
Tai Chi movement. And I know I didn't understand that when I was a teenager, you know, when I was in college, when I studied uh, and uh, a master. Um, later, I understand that. So, you, you, you know, this, this branch goes to the left, but it, it goes, uh, goes right, goes to the right first as preparation. So that, that's a, a cloud hand movement. Nobody knows what I'm talking about if you don't practice tai, tai Chi, so I stop. I have some student who is a Tai Chi teacher in my other class. I hope they're not uh, here. <laughs> I'm talking about Tai Chi. Okay. Now, this, this branch is the welcome stretched hand, you know, like a um, handshaking, handshaking branch. Should I put my face up before? Let me see. Okay, you can see my my face. All right. So uh, this 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 ta the crown of the pine is like a tai chi. Uh, another another um, interpretation I have is it's like uh, the you know the tai chi fish, the tai chi fish. So the dark and the light interlock like a tai chi fish. Yeah, the symbol of tai chi dao. You know. That's that's what it is. I think. I really don't know what he that he means. I always puzzled. Uh, I expect maybe a lifetime uh, understanding. Just uh, you know, you you can read the book about Tai Chi very easily without practice, um, but you really don't get it until you practice and practice. Right. So. Have some angular, 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 angular. This is a, the Southern Song Dynasty style we, we learned from Ma Yuan in other master study class. So I'm I'm using that reference and uh, a branch hanging to this side. So my drawing may be a little confusing I try to clarify things here so there there's a there's a branch there's a okay traditionally when we do the needles we do it one by one like like I did here and uh, with uh, this kind of eye drop um, so you you draw it's like a fan frame fan Chinese fan Chinese scholar fan like that and then you paint another group why is this important? Yes, it is very important. In, in the, even in the computer age, what they call this fractal design element. So when they record a tree, they don't have to record the tree pixel by pixel. They just create a, a, a basic uh, element and then uh, use uh, whose kind of uh, software spray you know I used to paint with a fractal design painter so fun I can create my own brush I just paint a few uh, a few leaves or flowers like cherry blossom and I just paint with a whole spray it, it become a tree instantly the key is you don't you have this pattern like uh, uh, design but the tree is not like a pattern right so tree is different. It's decorative. In Chinese painting is very decorative, but it's not like a pattern, not equal, um, you know, on our side and like uh, it repeats too much. Fractal software don't repeat. They don't. They have the mass to uh, what they call the noise. So they they would they will have this noise interfere with the the pattern to create this uh, uh, natural. Uh, street, they have this growing pattern. So it, it, it check the fractal tree, and you'll find uh, what I'm talking about. I was uh, a computer um, designer. My first job was to draw the buttons for a website. 
Uh, icons, icons. Yeah. They call me Pixel Painter. Oh, that's long time ago. Okay. Just. Uh, I have a question. Sure. Um, you draw the stone usually from uh, the top to the bottom. Join the tree from a branch and after that the leaves, right? This doesn't matter. Uh, do you repeat the question again, please? You draw the stone, right? The rock? Yeah. Usually from uh, the little higher to the bottom or doesn't matter? Oh, I start from the dark to the light. Start, uh, yeah. It doesn't matter from a uh, lower or high. Mm -hmm. Just start. Yeah, I, I, I usually start from where the dark is. I start okay. from the, the, the dark. The uh, the dark because okay. uh, um, theoretically it's a one stroke painting a one load painting and I, I think one load painting you load it with dark then you dilute it to do other or other rock part so you come it it, it it become dark to light understand yeah okay okay tree you have to grow the branch first yeah right? yeah okay I I have to uh, paint faster I think we only have I just realized we have uh, 40 minutes left okay so I'm, I'm gonna do a um, quicker um, approach I just kind of paint the the foliage like that okay I just use split brush and do the uh, foliage this way instead of traditional way but I do want to show people yeah I know what you were looking for yeah I know I know, I show you. Okay, I show you where you want to see. Uh, just a little detail, you know, I know how to do that. I don't want to spend one hour to do this. And if you have time, you can spend three days. They call it a three day a tree, five day a rock, something like this in an in ancient poem. But, you know, nowadays people are busy, they don't want to, they don't want to spend time on that. Yeah, that's fine. So we have a shortcut. You just you using medium grade, medium, medium ink to draw the shape of the crown first, and you can. Um, but I already saved the white of uh, the branches, right? And I will do some tweaks later. So you, oops, I, I touched that. I try to shorten that. I talk. Okay, so the outer shape is what. I'm concerned the outer shape right now outer shape I don't really worry about individual needles at all and the blob uh, the the blocks of uh, the clusters or what do you call this uh, um, blocks blocks of uh, foliage and uh, okay I just separate I just paint several groups the group when you come talking about a group you, you usually uh, think in terms of large, medium, and uh, small. I will say large, small, and medium because uh, uh, they don't come in the from large to small. Sometimes large, small, and then medium, it has the rhythm, right? So you, you just think about that. So this is a large, large block, and then I have some uh, medium. Uh, this, this this block is a medium block, and this may be a small one. Each, within, each, within each section, there is a small and a medium. Small, medium, large. Large, small, medium. Always, you know, now I'm doing a small. I purposely leave some gap, so I, I tell people, oh, this is a different, different uh, shape. It's a small shape. So I don't want to keep the same, definitely not the, you know, just the one, one dead umbrella. Uh, but you need to think about uh, uh, a, a, tar a tap uh, covering the whole tree, you know, at, at, uh, first. And so you get that shape. So forget about uh, what's, you know, in the middle first. And okay, here, here you can just use, go back to that, uh, um, brush to finish a little hanging branches 
because from this perspective, you need to. So I really um, think about you know you don't really copy exactly the strokes, and this time I I think about the, the uh, perspective, uh, and uh, just like uh, you're looking up the tree, so you're supposed to see something like that. As as to if it's a three or four, or you know how many strokes or what shape of the stroke doesn't matter. So as long as I got something there, it will fall the eye to to think, oh, that's the other side of the trees. Um, I'm seeing lighter tone, lighter value in in, in state uh, we call it value. In, in Britain they call it tone. In Chinese painting we call it tone, and uh, uh, the whole thing is called tonality. Tonality. Tonality is uh, means ink variation uh, of uh, uh, dark and the light. Uh, in Chinese painting or the ancient brush painting, we call the uh, we use dark to represent what's near, what's important, what's in the front, and the light means uh, uh, what's behind, what's behind, and that's important. Okay. And if you if you have time, you can go back to add the details uh, like the needles uh, later. Later. Okay. Uh, now let's look at the whole thing. Okay. <coughs> this part it's uh, supposed to be in the distance. Okay. So you can use color directly. Uh, just use the red red color. Uh, or uh, like I did, I tried to create this kind of narrow path or something, and you can use uh, uh, light ink because this is in the in the distance. So we we only need to draw a rough rough uh, silhouette. Silhouette is the French term for profile. It's the shape of the the mountain, and uh, uh, where's my? Okay, yeah, you can see that. So this this part is maybe shady a little bit, and then there is a there is a uh, diagonal. Diagonal is always good shape, you know. So this is more uh, horizontal and the and the verticals. Uh, this is more diagonal, but I, I also put a little bit echoing the, the same kind of uh, vertical and, uh, and uh, repeat a little bit pattern like uh, on the, the main pen, pen. So they belong to the same family of uh, rocks. I don't know what exactly the rock is. Granite is something very hard rock, I think. So th this is how to paint the rocky mountain. We, we Later we we may do something more um, like heels. Okay, this is the, the very light. If this is 10, this is maybe 3. 3, uh, value 3, right? Okay, and we don't, we don't, we don't use ink on the distant mountain. Uh, theoretically, you could do it with uh, uh, more blue, but this is it's like a sunset or sun, sunri uh, sunrise. So it's red, and uh, I think uh, here there's another interesting um, grouping. So we have a large, medium, and we need a small, which technically I call it jumper. Jump, jumper between the two. Okay. So this is considered as large, medium, and small. Okay. That's about it. And then the, the, uh, the red hills, we don't need to paint uh, any uh, outline. So I'm going to wash. And before we do the wash, we need to wet it dry. Uh, but let, let's say we, we haven't finished all the darks, right? Uh, you, might, you, might, you might say you know, there are some dots, right? The dots are the last. When you deal with dots, we call it mustards. Mustards, usually the, the, the darkest part. 
even darker than this. But uh, in this case, I, I do use dark on these uh, stones. But the, uh, in classical painting, these lines could be like this, medium. And then the dot, uh, the, the darkest, you, you, you can easily cover and uh, change things. Um, there's some vine, I think. Um, I, I just make them into red uh, crepes or um, whatever. Just make it a little easier for you. Not painting the, the maple tree. I think he does uh, obviously with maple tree. So I just put a, a little vine there. I think um, maybe it's coming from a, a different uh, dimension. Not not necessarily following this uh, uh, this route. You know, last time I did in a in a different painting. I uh, in Prince Puru's painting. I did it with vine. Oh. Why not? That's too childish. I think not natural. Natural goes like this. It goes, you know, when I grow the plant, I know how the vine works. When when I have a, um, on a pedu, I have a creep. Uh, a, a, what do you call this? Uh, I forgot. With the vine, kind of, uh, they will climb on on anything nearby. They they have these tendrils, very sensitive. When when they get a hold, they will they will get on up. So we can do that right here. And then we'll have some uh, bushes, something like that later. You can you can start doing that a little bit. I use this dots to to add a dimension or just you know to change the contrast or to uh, modify a line. I don't cover um, the good part. I you know you don't you can even omit it if uh, if uh, you think it's finished. There's no, no uh, rule. Just rhythm is important. So I have dance and sparse, something like that. That that's a rhythm. It's a concentration and disperse in Western terminology. Oh, God, I I think I gave you too much, too much, too much. Forget about the language. Just look at uh, what I'm doing. Try to understand. Try to understand why this one looks different than yours, or something. You know, that's why what I'm thinking. So, listen, <laughs> not not equal. Lots of students just da, 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 just a single line. You know, just like uh, ants. Um, anyway. And uh, to think about uh, uh, lighting, you can you can add some dark to the bottom of these uh, areas, or uh, don't have, you know? I think in, in the in the Western terms, you know, there will be shade. Right? I I because I learned one more, uh, about two years watercolor, so I, I'm more thinking in the Western Western. Um, way, which is fusion, you know, it's always good. I think these modern artists, they, they have already got influenced by basic uh, uh, perspective, lighting, and this kind of concept from um, oil or watercolor. So. I don't paint them one by one. You see, I just suggest, I just suggest the, the, the this uh, this uh, this fan shaped uh, leaves. I just try to paint the general impression of that. So, just the traditionally you go one by one, and uh, you would do it slowly. And I think uh, he in different uh, occasion he does different work. I will show you uh, the variations. That's why I think it's uh, um, depends on the time you know the effort he wants to spend. He and the size of the painting for this kind of painting is like a preliminary study of a large painting. If you paint this large, you must do more details. That's my advice because you don't just ex you know paint a small painting into copy a small painting into a large one without adding 
more details, uh, there's no substance, you know, to do the large painting. Then. But for small painting, you have the, f the freedom of to concentrate on the large. So do a small painting uh, large, do a large painting small. <laughs> Does it make sense? My my wife taught 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 taught, uh, so, uh, taught me a story when she uh, take the college entry exam for you know the uh, composition uh, test. Her mother, she's a college professor um, in literature. Just give her this word. If the topic is large, uh, you know, write more small. Make it more small. If the topic is small, make it big. Same thing. So we are writing an article. It's just like you, you, you know, you, you. Uh, yeah, the painting is like an article. There's a beginning. There's ending. There's a uh, conclusion. The conclusion is the seal. And the inscription. Okay. To save time, I'm going to use this. Let's do let's this around. <coughs> you can put a piece of paper on it to protect the iron from uh, staining the uh, the painting, right? You can use a hair dryer, but I like this because I have control where I want to set, heat set, you know. So this is uh, what um, the master uh, Chen Songye recommended. He, he also used his palm because your, your body temperature can take the uh, moisture away. If your, a stroke is too um, wet, you, you use your arm, blot it, you, you can use a piece of paper on top of that. And uh, you can add some water to, to uh, rescue a, a, a ink spot when it's, uh, before it gets dry. So that's all the tips I learned from reading his book. I got from uh, uh, Monica. I think Monica is uh, maybe in the class, but she will also in tomorrow's class, uh, small class. So um, thank you, Marika, for sharing all the resources with me. With me. I have uh, finished this ink painting and uh, ink, pa uh, ink drawing part. So next is the, the color wash. Ironically, we have to wet this again. So you, you heat set it, so it's not going to rain when you wet it, right? Uh, you can also do it to dry, I think. Then you do wet into wet. Because uh, this doesn't come with much mist. So um, you can just use a, um, a light wash to wet the painting. That's okay. I'm, I'm using some indigo to start with uh, the, the, um, the tree. We just use two colors, indigo and brown to make it easy, okay. And maybe some red. Brown as a yellow. So you can add a little, you can add a little ink to it to make it uh, darker. So I just wash my dish, basically. Can you see it? Okay. So indigo as a, if you use it alone, it's too, especially the indigo from tube. It's kind of uh, too vibrant. The one with the uh, traditional chip uh, chips is more uh, like uh, the the old-fashioned uh, jean color. You know, it has um, richer color. Uh, the tube color is a little too. You need to mute it. Too too vibrant sometimes. So you see, I I negative paint. Because I, I uh, that's the reason I don't wet the whole painting. I it's easier to control the 
the uh, white. So I I leave the trunk um, white. You can also do the trunk first. You know, you you will see the the brown. Um, since I already did it, there's no um, gener general rule on this. Uh, but normally the transparent color comes before the opaque color. And you can also glaze the opaque with transparent. So there's, it just go back and forth, back and forth. Um, and the cool and the cool and the warm, <laughs> to use uh, uh, Western terms cool and the warm color complement each other, right? So I use a little cool color in the shady area on top. Then the uh, sunny part here, just basically the, um, the brown color, right? Okay. And uh, you can highlight the, highlight the, the line with uh, some shadow kind of uh, wash. And uh, normally he does, the master does that with a, a, a brown color. You can also use blue and uh, light ink just to create the depth. So now the, the, the ink, uh, the, the rocks start to pop. Okay. And I, I exhaust all the, the, the color and then I add water without washing the brush. Let me show you how I do this, very important. Um, let me see. Oh, I need to take that camera back. Okay, so now you can see, I don't wash the brush. I, I, I use water as a color. So now I, my brush is, is soft. It has a soft uh, tip. Very important uh, because if you have experience with other class t uh, teacher, we'll start with you uh, loading the brush with gradation, which usually start with light and then dark. So the top, the top, the tip of the brush is the darkest. Now I reverse that, so I you add light to this. So that that means the you see that the so left side is lighter, right? And if I add dark here to the tip, you you see that it's darker again. Um, so I try to create some contrast. I think about uh, similar to, so the light comes from top. So the sh yeah, the greens, blues on the bottom maybe, or reverse, doesn't matter. It's just a preparation for um, the warm, I think. So this will be a purplish color, I guess. Okay. So next, I'm doing the distant mountain. Um, we can make it more dramatic with a little bit uh, amber. Um, I, I think amber would be too earthy. Let me think about that. Maybe, maybe use a, I try to mix color to get the orange color. Okay. Yeah, orange, we can mix colors. Together. Let's use amber on the rock first and the tree trunk. Let's get dry. Let's see. Oops. Oh, got some toothpick. Yeah, that's what uh, you need, some small stuff. You, it's very handy. Just poke that. And Fifteen minutes. Oh, we don't have time to answer questions, but we already answered some, right? Um, no, um, Henry, there yeah. is a question. Okay. What was the name of that Japanese watercolor uh, pen set you showed before? Oh, you can get from different brands. I think the one I got is maybe, I sell this on the website. It looked like this. Um, it's uh, from Mo Yuntang. I think there's Japanese uh, pronunciation. I don't know how to pronounce it. But uh, you can get from uh, uh, Jixiang, you know, that's the Ch Chinese word for that. 
Ji Qiang, Ji Qiang color. I think on Amazon they they might not have this uh, brand that we carry. I bought directly from Japan. I I I imported from uh, Japan. So they probably the same quality. Um, same yeah, not much different between brands. So any brand should find any brand blocks yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for passing the question. Yeah, just uh, keep uh, mm, asking questions if uh, any. I Another question is, uh, is it possible for the ink to be diluted when moistened with other paint? Moistened with other paint. Uh, so I I think you, 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 yeah, this is a good question. The light could be, uh, the dark could become light when you put water in it, charge water in it. Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's positive. So you can change the tone on paper. Is that what I mean? <laughs> you can dilute it with the water in, on the palette. You can also dilute it um, right on paper. And you know, in the artist uh, named Fu Bao Shi class, I, I teach that. I think you can find under uh, Zhu Yan Mo, a, a new Fu Bao Shi artist. Um, I, yeah, I always do that. Um, so the, 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 the light is not from the palette, it's from the water, uh, water, uh, you know, into running into the wet, wet, uh, uh, Wet ink, yeah. Does that answer your question? So you can change the tone, yeah. Okay. Uh, the question uh, is meant to ask if the ink could be damaged when you paint on it, meaning that when you hit the black ink as a first layer, oh, then oh, you I put the color on it, would you damage the ink? No, 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 the, 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 okay, that's a good question. Theoretically, uh, color is the guest, ink is the host, so the, the color should not be um, too heavy to cover the ink. Yeah, so, but sometimes I want to cover, like uh, for example here, I think that the, I want to, I, I, if I want to make this, this dark lighter, so I just cover it, so it's a, um, it's a rescue, right? Yeah, I, I can I can cover it with uh, even. Um, I don't use white. This is my white. This is my white. My blue white and my green white. I have two white. That's why we have these two colors. So handy. Let me show you how to do this. We call this um, in the term of the um, technical term used by the master Chen. Chen Songyan, uh, he called this Xiang uh, Bao Dian. Xiang Xiang means in bed, in bed, uh, in bedding, treasure, in treasure stone, like tre treasure. Bao means uh, treasure, in bedding treasure dots. You understand? So I embed, I embed the. Um, this is opaque. So this, you dot right in the middle of the dark. Not larger, but smaller. It's like embed a diamond. Embed a, 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 a azurite, what, what do you call this, a green stone, right? So that, that's, that's how we do this. And you can also put it on the tree. Uh, and I would, I'll put some dark first. So again, this is on, on the dark, this represents the uh, corns, the pine corns, that kind of thing. And you need to wet it dry. If you if you put the ink in the wet dark ink, it will be vanished. Um, so you need to wet it dry, and then all you can use you know, like a very pure, very pure build up on that, it's okay too. Let me show you. 
I cannot really see. Henry? Can you see it now? Yeah. Henry, I'm sorry. Could you repeat again from when you were adding the light green again? That okay. entire segment, please. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, this let me explain this here. <clears throat> um, Xiang Bao Dian. Okay, Xiang Bao Dian. I don't think uh, we should uh, write the Chinese, but embedding. It's to, it's to uh, put jewelries into your uh, ring, for example. You yeah, put a few Xiang pieces yeah, okay. of the treasure, a uh, precious yeah. jewels. See, this is a Xiang Bao Dian. This is a Xiang Bao Dian. Like a, you so the green is like a piece of a small little precious uh, Precious stone on, on the, yes. uh, yeah, to, to embed a precious stone. Uh, it should, this should be inside. It could be a line, you know. It, sh it should be inside the. So this, this is not done like this. Or oh, you put a rock. I um, mean, put a stone there, and then you draw a circle. Well, it might be, but it's different. It's not done like that. It's done like this. Okay. So this is a shambao dian. Shambao dian. So usually, uh, it could be on on bird's feather, like the bird's head. Do you understand the the blue jay? You know, like a, if I do a bird, it, this is the bird. So it it's a, the it turns into the a hummingbird. For example, you can see this uh, a hummingbird's head, the the the, the last of uh, the hummingbird. You can also use a uh, opaque um, red, like a cinnabar, to do the same thing. So this is uh, called embedding. The, for the for the mineral colors, you need to embed it. Yeah. Okay, now the reds, all right? So we got, uh, um, we have to hurry. We got uh, less than f 10 minutes left. Um, yeah, since we, I, I understand you don't have cinnabar or vermilion, but uh, for demo, demo purpose, uh, you can get it, uh, you know, by yourself maybe. So I just show you how to do this, right? Because uh, uh, to complete, you know, all the mineral colors, we have green, blue, and also the oranges. Um, this one. Okay. So this is yan zi, is that correct? No, this is the vermilion. Zhu biao. Zhu biao. Uh, do we have zhu zhu biao? I, I forgot. No, we did not buy zhu biao. biao. Okay. Yeah, this is zhu biao. The, Oh, the cinnabar is a, a little bit uh, door. It's more opaque, maybe. Let's see, this is a two. It's a similar. Uh, cinnabar is a, a little um, pale. Then uh, you can mix them. I mean, it's a little more covering. So I mix the two, maybe. Can you see it? You can see that. Okay. Oh, you didn't see the greens, the the green and blues. Okay. So now I I put this on the on this. Uh, um, this vine, and I vary the, the the group again, large, small, and the medium. You know, something like that. So there should there could be some on the tree, also, and you can have some. Just, just some variation of the uh, um, of that. <coughs> you can you can still add more uh, cool colors. I think uh, we could, we didn't get much, but it's basically a, an ink an ink painting, you know, with some uh, accent of color. That's that's what it is. I think. Um, okay, that's a uh, that's about it. Uh, we can um, let me complete with uh, some. Uh, Distant mountains. I'll use a little bit uh, Zhu Biao and Zhu Sha. Uh, that's a cinnabar and vermilion mix. Um, you can. Should I use rouge? Oh, we can use rouge. But rouge is a kind of cool color, so I, I may have to add yellow to it. Let's see, you can get on. And that's too dark. Uh, it's, it's like a. Yeah, this is. This color is not look like a mountain color this is too bluish it's good for the cherry blossoms no, next time anyway but you can use that 
you can use rouge mixed with this for the shadow. This is a bluish color, so you can you can use that for uh, the shady parts. You know, just to this is the shadow part, and uh, you can do a little peak like that. Okay. Um. Yeah, I have to light it again. So I load the brush with the uh, gradation again. The the clean water behind. I got some blue even accidentally, but that's okay. I just leave it there. I got some blue in in, in the brush. So you you if you use the side of the brush, you will keep that gradation. Okay. So you you draw. Oops, you cannot really see what I'm doing. Okay, I just did this mountain here. And again, um, I consider it large. And you can leave some white in between that for the cards. And then a, a smaller one. So always, uh, and then there's a medium or something. Okay, and uh, distant mountain could be darker in, in natural also, you know, um, especially in the uh, twilight time, the, the, the horizon um, turns dark. Yeah. Okay, so you can make more needle shape. It's more um, classical to do this kind of needle. needle uh, we call it a bamboo shoot mountain kind of, and you can draw a little bit of uh, cards, and, uh, and the to to to, f to make it feel higher. Let me just finish this, and uh, I I I put some pink all over because it's it's like a sunset, and the entire painting is in the warm tone so you can put a little um, on the edge of uh, there also okay you can even put the uh, pink in the sky it's, it's very um, look like you know 70s uh, painting to, to do that because uh, everything is red in red china um, okay let me see to finish this part and usually I, I have a sweeping stroke like you know just just quick quick sweep to the to the side like that and you can have this part a little bit taller so it it, it's, it um, make it clear this is uh, in front of the red. Okay, just make it to uh, over overlap a little bit. And uh, here I want to define that ridge a little bit with the dark. Okay, now I try to to show the rescue. Said if I made this mistake, it's too dark. Um, what I do is using a blot b before it gets dry. I blot it first. Okay, now it's lighter. If not enough, I, I charge it with clean water. Um, just use a clean brush. And uh, you can use the water, not directly, it will make it smear, right? You can use the water to, to uh, stop it from smearing to the surrounding areas. Uh, and then the water will also dilute it. Uh, you just build a, a pool of water next to it, and the water will, because I already dried this part, that's drier, the water will, will you, you touch a little bit, the water will replace the ink. Okay. Let's see how it works. Just put a, a lot of water here, and that will, that will dilute the, the, the paint. So if you want to stop it from smearing, you put water to protect the white color.
color. So for example, if you, if you want to, to keep this white, I just wash it. And the, the water will smear towards where it's drier, not to uh, incite the white. And okay. So this is like uh, my arrow, uh, attention arrow. So look at the tree. I'm pointing back to the it's an eye stopper. Uh, I'm pointing the direction to to the to lead you back to the to the tree. Okay. Oh, my time is up. The last thing I'm going to show you is to finish it uh, with a signature. Uh, you can sign like this uh, with Chinese vertically, or you can just put it on the corner. Um, but before I do that, I, I need to iron this area. So maybe I, I'll just write the title here. And you have the template of doing this if you want to write here too. Uh, either way is fine. There are not just one way doing this. You can have, uh, uh, depends on the length of the inscription, or you can just, you know, if it's only a signature, you can write it uh, uh, on the corner. And if you, you sign with English uh, name, you 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 just uh, uh, use a initial maybe, and then um, put it in a square. It will look like a seal too. And speaking of seal, um, usually it's the name seal come last. It's like the period of the sentence or the article. Um, let me let me write. Uh, when we copy someone, we, we will say mimic or homage to someone, okay? And uh, if, it's a if, if it's inspired someone, you can say ni, and it's another word, mimicking, yeah. So in this case, I will say um, after. So I use my, my signature brush, or the whistle brush, uh, the basic uh, small whistle brush. Okay, I'm going to... Zoom in a little bit. Okay. Um, the title is uh, Tai San Ding Zhang Yi Qing Song. It's a it's a, a famous uh, um, song title also or opera opera song, Ch Peking opera song, contemporary Peking opera song. Tai San Ding Zhang Yi Qing Song means that uh, you, 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 you like the character of a uh, pine standing on top of a mountain and uh, withstanding all the um, hardship in your life and uh, not changing your um, initial uh, face. means the top peak on top. Taishan is the highest mountain uh, for you know the emperor's uh, worship uh, heaven place of uh, or worshiping the heaven. Taishan Ding Shan Yi Qing Song Yi means blue. Qing means blue. Blue and the green is the same in many cultures. Song means a uh, pine. <coughs> my my s my uh, handwriting is not so good. <coughs> okay, and uh, fang means a uh, means a mimic or after or in someone's uh, style. Um, his last name Qian. I put Qian. I I respect him, so I just call Master Qian instead of uh, call his name. And then my uh, this the uh, year of a uh, uh, year of a uh, Xinchou means a uh, metal metal um, ox metal ox 
It's the year of uh, 2003. Ah, uh, 2000. Sorry, <laughs> my brain just uh, my brain just went blank. Uh, 2021. And uh, my name Henry Li, in Chinese Xiao Hui Li, uh, Li Xiao Hui. The family name always comes first. See the 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 characters uh, are small. So I don't want to destroy the proportion. Uh, also, my seal matches the size of the signature. Okay. You can use the small seal. This is a half inch, or maybe three eighths. And just my last name. Let's uh, let's complete the the painting. Um, okay, let me just put a little bit uh, rouge there. Okay. Any questions before we finish today's meeting? Uh, next time we'll learn cherry blossom, or cherry forest maybe in landscape. Um, hopefully you will see some real cherries there in New York. We already passed the season, I think, here. Now you can open the unmute themselves, and uh, we will uh, give them a chance to ask questions directly if they want. Okay. Someone's asking if you could zoom into the characters. The oh, the characters. Uh, I will type in the chat maybe if someone reads to Chinese. Uh, well, I think they just want to see it closer. Oh, they just want to see it. You want to just zoom in on it for a moment. Okay, I'll do that. Let me just zoom and the focus. Okay, let me translate uh, one by one. Okay. Yeah. Tai Shan is the name of the mountain, famous uh, uh, East uh, Sacred Mountain. Yeah. There are five sacred mountains. Uh, the one on the east is uh, on the east coast is uh, uh, Mount Tai. It's not the tallest mountain, uh, not as uh, as uh, pretty as uh, the Huangshan Mountain, uh, but it's a very you know uh, imperial uh, sacred place, uh, peak, uh, top, one green pine. This pine could be a thousand year old. It had witnessed many dynasty changes. Every emperor um, received the mandate there. And from the first emperor, Qin Shi Huangdi, he feng, it's a, in a feng shan ceremony. Feng shan means uh, to receive mandate. Uh, so it's, it's a very special place. And uh, Fang means mimic. Master Qian, that's the, the um, original uh, artist, artist yeah, name that I tried to introduce today and uh, thank again for, for, for the... This. I did not get a confirmation. Okay, sorry about the, <laughs> the noise. Uh, okay. you, you can mute yourself if you're talking to... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to do too many things at once. Okay, yeah. Um, sure. So this, this is the year of uh, uh, the lunar year, Xing Chou, and then my last name Li Xiaohui, like my last name Xiao Li. Okay, so you you can have a po poetic uh, uh, title, and then the tribute, uh, the year, and the name. That's the format of it. And the shortest is the year and the uh, name, or it's just the name, just your 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 last name, a uh, first name, uh, or last name and first name, the year, and, and the inspiration, you know, sort. Uh, or homage, um, and then uh, the, if you have a title or a poem, okay.
Yeah, the Chinese painting, when you finish, you put your name, they do not use the yi, they use the Chinese lunar yi. Yeah, it's uh, um, because the, the Chinese um, uh, zodiac, zodiac, uh, you know, the zodiac uh, numbers, uh, you, uh, you only have uh, one life cycle of uh, 60. Um, because uh, suppose you learn at the age of uh, 12, maybe you, know, you, bec you become to sign in your work at uh, 24. Most people don't become uh, you know, really. So the same year will repeat only once when you reach 60, when you, you know, um, after 60 years. So they don't repeat um, every 60 years, understand? Every sixty years. Sixty is years, yeah, sixty years. So they don't they don't repeat every sixty. Years. That's why you, when you see this, you can you can see oh, um, how many uh, wh which years are this? The last time is one hundred twenty years ago, you know, <laughs> or sixty years ago, right? You understand? Also, the year compiled with the Chinese 12 zodiac animals. Yeah, this is the, and the there are 10 heavenly uh, stems and uh, 12 earthly branches. So 10 times 12, um, not just time, they uh, form the, what is called the composite, the, the group, the terms, 60 terms. It's called the jiazi. Jiazi, yeah. So uh, 60th birthday usually is a, a um, very important uh, big date. Anyway, um, thank you for all the participants. I know you, uh, some places are very uh, late in the night maybe. Uh, I appreciate your participation from all over the world. And let me uh, know if you have any questions and email to uh, the, our um, host Yong Li and uh, thank Yong Li for all your effort, your I initiation of this uh, entire program. I'm very honored to be part of this. Henry, Henry, just one question. How do we clean the brush oh, and put good, it away? Good. How do we clean the brush? Uh, good question. I was asked uh, just uh, yesterday uh, about the same question. And uh, I will say, um, you can, uh, you just wash the brush in clean water, and then I usually save, you know, uh, the question was, um, can you save this uh, dirty water or something? I think yes, uh, if it's a lot of color in it, you know, we didn't use much color, so it, it, I just dump it. Um, if there's a lot of color, you can use that as a gray uh, for some abstract painting. Maybe uh, some artists just pour the gray water on, on a uh, pile of uh, paper and then come back the next day to pick up some uh, random effect and uh, keep working on those. Um, so after you clean the brush, you use a paper towel to, to dry the brush and then just lay it down uh, to dry before you put it in a brush holder. Or you can hang it uh, with uh, this is a string attached. Not every brush has a string, so uh, just lay, lay it down to air dry it. Um, you, you don't want to use any soap. However, uh, I, um, yesterday I, I used uh, my late uh, pet uh, dog, uh, Cappy's shampoo. I can smell <laughs> That that's it. And so, a, sh a dark shampoo could be used. I I, I, I made this uh, white. It was dark before I, I shampooed it. I think you, you can use shampoo, but not not recommended for. Uh, this is just a cosmetic difference. So if it turns dark, just uh, let it be. You know. Right. It, yeah, I don't really shampoo it every time, but you can if you want to uh, make it. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, right. He expects you to be awake. Uh -huh. So you can use shampoo to, to um, wash out the residuals. Yeah. And then uh, just, just
just keep it neat and uh, wash it, uh, you know, right after you use. That's really important. It will turn dark, uh, it will turn hard if you forgot, but you can soak it in water, but not to put it in the water for longer uh, than, you know, I will never leave it in water, <laughs> just to clean it with uh, raining water, okay, on, on the, in, the, in the tap water, and then you, you dry it, you, you dry it. Normally, Henry, I, yeah. 我如果有还有好多那个墨的那个就是那个颜色颜料在上头，我不洗可以吗？我这样明天我就不不可以，你比呃，the the the brush will be damaged if the ink uh gets dry. So you want to clean the ink to to overnight. You can save the ink by um squeeze out the ink. You know, maybe uh okay, you can save the ink. Like this, you put some clean water in it. We call this yang yan to uh, okay. to to uh, preserve the ink. Actually, uh -huh. this provides the water for next uh, work. You know, you, you you grind it. You have to grind it. It will become lighter, but it will not dry. Don't let it dry. If it's dried, you, then you put the water on it. It's called overnight ink. This kind of ink, like an ink cake, has this kind of overnight ink uh -huh. feel and look. It's a, it acts differently because uh, uh, the the glue is not uh, fresh, so it has more um, uh, pastel effect. Understand? Some people like that, especially on on uh, on this kind of paper, like uh, absorbent paper. Mm. You can use overnight ink to get a very interesting effect. For example. Uh, because the ink smears, right? Mm. I use overnight ink. And this is a, it's not really overnight. It's the ink cake, but it acts like a, act like overnight ink. You can see, if I paint with regular ink, the the ink goes with the smear. But now you can see the ink does not go with the smear. So I can paint. I can paint a fish in the water with the bone without worry about you know the smear because it smears the water goes this far as you can see that but the overnight overnight ink stays but you don't like this on, uh, because especially some uh, neat freaks they wash their ink completely they don't like to see the dust uh, kind of uh, particles uh, in the in the on the paper so it all depends. Contemporary artists uh, more tend to like this. They, 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 they create an interesting texture. We think it's beautiful, but not ancient people. <laughs> it, it changed, the aesthetic changed, the technique changed. Yeah. So you see the difference? If I use fresh ink here from my, my uh, uh, grind ink, you, you don't see that. You, you'll see fresh, fr fresh, uh, strokes it's different you know this is fre more fresh than this so this is fresh ink sometimes we we ha we must get the fresh ink especially when you paint uh, um, like a lobsters you don't want to use overnight ink it will not be very transparent translucent kind of um, feel right you want to have that uh, clean uh, transparency kind of so that's uh, fresh if you use overnight ink uh, just feels dead, you know, just dirty or something. Yeah, but it's still, you know, it's just. Your residual, uh, your residual. Yeah, it has like particles. It's like. Uh, oh, particle, yeah. Um, yeah, pastel, I call it pastel. Kind of fun, 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 if you like a granny, use a, you can leave it. You can use a, you can re, you obviously Overnight. use it. Uh. There's another way you can get around. You can use a, um, you can you can resituate the granny uh, overnight ink with a glue, like a, a gelatin or peach sap glue. We also carry that. Uh, that that will that will help to, uh, you know, to so th there's no loose. Particles, it will be 
more integrate, resituated. With you can you can put some glue in the in the water to mm. resituate the overnight ink. So that's a good question. Very good question. Harry, we're talking about your work. Can you help us read it? Uh, uh, I probably can't read all of them. I used to be five people. Yuna, you you want to pick five people to read? We can try it. Maybe next time I'll give you some more time. Okay. Thank you. 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 Oh, good. Yeah. Um, it's uh three twenty one now. We are twenty one minutes uh, past uh, schedule. Yeah, we need for to. For uh, okay, our teacher. Okay. If. Okay. Let me let me uh take a screenshot and and uh, I'll let you go. Let me see how to do that. Print screen. Okay. <laughs> I'm if sure. Henry wants to pick a few pieces of the class work now to critique, uh -huh. I will randomly pick some. Okay. Uh, only if Henry has time. Okay. Uh, let us do uh, uh, two more, maybe. So uh, this is uh, who's your your. Uh, I I I think I yeah. I have to keep you uh, to to make it easy. Just hold it to, uh, on your side. Yeah. Hold it up a little bit. Okay. Um, okay. Very, very good. Uh, um, this is not your first time, right? <laughs> very, very good start, I would say. The uh, division of the rock uh, space could be a little uh, more sophisticated with more dense mm -hmm. areas on yes. the left side or your right side, maybe. So uh, it will have some dance and sparse contrast. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Is that Henry? Yeah. Can I show you my first? Sure. Very first uh, attempt yeah, I'm looking at, at uh, your ink work, uh, Fra Florence. Yeah, very yes. very good uh, uh, start on on the uh, um, rice paper, a uh, Japanese rice paper. Very very nice. Um, this is I, the first time I'm ever doing a. Ever oh, I I I, I can't believe that you did this. Uh, you're the fresh beginner, so. Yeah. Very, very good. You have a good sense of uh, um, s uh, rhythm in terms of uh, large, small shapes. You got all the points right. And the trees, thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, the, the, the tree uh, crown could be a little bit uh, heavier on top. Uh, and yes. The, yeah, that's all. And then finish the rest part. You'll be so you're on the, the, the right track. Yeah. I have to iron it first, I think, a little bit. Uh -huh. You don't have to iron it uh, if you just wait it dry and then working on other space, uh, other oh, spot. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, I'm going Thank to replace you. So here's mine, Henry. Sonia, here's mine. Okay, Sonia. And N. Oh, I'm looking at N, right? Yes. N. Um, okay. Your, your composition is more uh, diagonal, which is good. Um, yeah, y uh, I'm... Uh, I'm not, uh, but, you know, I have no uh, rejection about uh, breaking the frame, but you need to extend all the way. Don't leave any gap. Um, and your leaf should be more developed on all the branches. And you should okay, have more complete you. painting. Thank you. Yes, hi, hi, Henry. Yeah. May I sew for you? It's Sonia. Sonia. Uh, <laughs> how do I spot Sun Sonia? Bow. Okay, so, so uh, Sonia, uh, I'm looking at the gentleman's work. Okay. F uh, uh, Fe Federico. Yes, mine. Federico. Uh, okay. Um, I like the the oh, Rouge yeah. Mountain. I was afraid to use, but I see you used it to very nicely. That's good. And you got some orange in it or, or amber. Um, that's very nice. I and that's my. Uh, um, first uh, mm. notice i think the first glance at the the tree is really good uh, uh, gesture uh, not completely um <coughs> equivalent <laughs> it's kind of a uh, i think balanced <coughs> sorry i lose my voice yeah very nice uh, uh, cool and the uh, cool and the warm color on the rock 
the uh, minor rock is a little bit uh, different in, in style. I don't know why. Maybe you can try to uh, repeat some of the patterns or just make them more uh, right, look like a f well. you know like a child of the the parents. Not not uh, too much uh, uh, different. Maybe a little more uh, detail should work. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. It's mine, Sonia. Uh, uh, Sonia. Okay. Uh, we have Daniel. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Listen, that's the way they are. Yes. Okay, uh, Sonia. I I, I think uh, you'll know. Uh, I'll find you later. Okay. Everyone, they get to the point. This this is a this is a Everybody very good uh, tree trunk. I I would add a little more uh, foliage when you have time. You know, you can spend uh, half an hour, uh, one hour to to, right. to add those foliages. So Sonia, you you are using Daniel's uh, name, right? I I no no this, no, is, Daniel. this is Daniel. Okay, I'm talking about uh, Daniel's work. As I heard someone. Uh, Sonia separate now. Okay. Um, so you want to pin me? Okay. Thank you, Daniel. I think it's a uh, very now. good the tree, and uh, I hope uh, the the completion will, will will look very very nice. Yeah. So this will yes, more look like the Bristol corn tree in in uh, North um, East California. Look like that. It, yeah. It, you are painting the Bristol corn tree? You're kidding? Yes, uh, that was the intent. Oh, so <laughs> we're talking about the, yeah, so very good Bristol corn tree. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Very good. Uh, okay, let me, uh, this is so, Song? Song? Yes, yeah, Sonia. Sonia, okay, Sonia, you mentioned it. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is a very good composition to the very, uh, dear to the original uh, master, which is uh, good. I like the t the highs. Yeah, you put the tree really on top. It's uh, only like a f one fourth, which is good. Yeah, you got the the composition very nice. I I, I really like the all the textures and the colors. Colorful rock. It's beautiful. Um, I don't have any any uh, bad thing uh, to mention. Do you have any questions? No, but thank you so much. That's such a great compliment. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you got the A. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Hello, now, Henry. Rosemary. Hello. Rosemary, hello. Rosemary, hello. Rosemary, Rosemary you speak Chinese. Teresa. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you, your, your paintings look very uh, thick, and uh, we, that's a good word in Chinese. Uh, we, we call this. Uh, very substantial, you know. Um, yeah, very nice rocky feel. I, very good rock. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I I think you you got you got the spirit of both my and the masters. Very good with your own interpretation. Um, yeah, you. I don't think any any improvement I can suggest. It's it's a very hmm. good very good painting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Susan, Susan, your your tree is really nice. I love the angular rocks and the the, the turns on the on the trunk. It's a very integral uh, in style. Um, I I'll give you five stars. Five stars is my highest score. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, Larry, your <laughs> rock uh, could could have a little uh, large and small arrangement on the rock. So uh, try to get rid of the roughy feel, the drafty feel. Try to get a little bit organized on the tree and the rock. Uh, I like the spontaneity, just to be, uh, to control a little bit more, especially the left side, just a little. Uh, slower, paint more. Uh, yeah, uh, slower. You you'll be good. And uh, you don't lack its spontaneity. You just need more uh, training. Trained. You you can train your spontaneity a little bit. Okay. Just by Thank copying, you. by copying exactly what you're copying, and then you'll get better. Great. Something might have happened.